I've got a story for you this morning from Sri Ramakrishna. <laughs> Actually, I think one of the one of the sages, probably the sage that I have learned the most from, who has really transformed my inner world, just learning about his character and his nature. A very fun-loving sage, just full of life and full of surprise when you read about his life and the things that he tried and experimented with uh, to become what he ended up becoming, that realized divine self. It's hilarious. It's so unorthodox and so uh, playful and experimental. There's a book called The Great Master, uh, written by Swami Sharadananda, that kind of follows his sadhana, his spiritual practice. And, <laughs> you know, he practiced being the handmaiden of God, dressed as a woman for six months. He lived in a tree so he could do the practice of Hanuman's uh, great devotion to Rama. And uh, just just such an adventurous uh, soul. There was no limit <laughs> to what he would do to, to uh, find the divine, to, to suss out his divine nature. So it all starts with a teacher. You know, he had several teachers, several gurus that came to him in succession, and each one took him uh, farther down his path. And he tells this story. Some think, oh, I'm a bound soul. I shall never acquire knowledge and devotion. But if one receives the guru's grace, one has nothing to fear. Once a tigress attacked a flock of goats. As she sprang on her prey, she gave birth to a cub and died. The cub grew up in the company of the goats. The goats ate grass and the cub followed their example. They bleated and the cub bleated too. Gradually, it grew to be a big tiger. One day, another tiger attacked the same flock. It was amazed to see the grass-eating tiger, which I guess I'd be amazed too. Running after it, the wild tiger at last seized it, whereupon the grass-eating tiger began to bleat. The wild tiger dragged it to the water and said, Look at your face in the water. It's just like mine. Here is a little meat. Eat it. Saying this, it thrust some meat into its mouth. But the grass-eating tiger would not swallow it and began to bleat again. Gradually, however, it got the taste for blood and came to relish the meat. Then the wild tiger said, Now, you see, there is no difference between you and me. Come along and follow me into the forest. So there, can't be, so there can be no fear if the guru's grace descends on one. He will let you know who you are and what your real nature is. If the devotee practices spiritual discipline a little, the guru explains everything to him. Then the disciple understands for himself what is real and what is unreal. God alone is real and all the world is illusory. So this wonderful <laughs> story about a, about a bleating ma <laughs> tiger who doesn't know his nature and being taught by a t an, a t another tiger who comes out of the woods and, and shows him his true nature and uh, brings him to himself. And that's our situation. You know, we don't know who we are. And so we live according to the senses and mind. And we as a group have formed nations around that idea and created a, a, a story of life around that idea. And then these sages come in their awesome transcendent state, this, this primordial joy that bubbles out of them, this calmness of mind that's unbreakable. And they walk among us and they're saying, look at yourself, look, look, this is your real nature, ever free, ever pure, ever blissful, you know, completely wandering as a child of the divine in this world, in, in complete unconditioned love. This is what you are. Find that teacher. Find that teacher who has found the self, who knows their identity, so that they can remind you of yours. <laughs>